All right, so for the, uh, I guess, corona-infected uh, Talking Bull podcast, we, uh, we were doing this setup in, in Melbourne uh, in our trailer, uh, but that got cancelled, obviously. Um, so we thought we'd get Mick Doon and Jack Doon into, uh, into the studio today to, to round up this episode of Talking Bull. Uh, gentlemen, how's it going? Yeah, it's quiet. You know, there's... Uh a lot of disruption happening out there, but um, you know everyone's got to sort of adhere to the uh, regulations and keeping everyone safe and the distancing uh, the spaces that you got to provide each other here. So, you know, let's get through it and hopefully we come out the other side and we can get on with life again. Yeah, no, that's it. So, Jack, a bit of a uh, bit of sim racing time for you. Well, I guess like you've pretty much got like the perfect quarantine compound, right? You can do the go karts, you can do the the simulator stuff. Are you just is this fine for you to go into this quarantine situation? Um, obviously, it's not like ideal because we'd want to be racing over in Europe. But um, yeah, I've probably got it better than most um, with the the kart track, the karts, um, a, a simulator, which helps with all the eye racing and the different programs. So yeah, no, obviously it it enables me to be able to do more on that side of things um, and hopefully come out better. So is it kind of uh, is it kind of cool to be in the situation where like you're getting uh i guess like interviewed with your dad like obviously your dad's accomplished so much and then you're on that same trajectory like is it kind of cool to um to be in that situation where we're sort of we can talk a little bit about mixed racing and then we're talking about your racing as well yeah um obviously he's like oh well, i'm at a completely different stage in my career and i haven't really to um to any standard like accomplish much compared to anything that dad's done um, so hopefully um, I'm on that same track and I can work towards that. Um, but yeah, I've never really been in, in this situation. Yeah, no, I mean, it must be it must be even a proud moment for you in a way to where it's like, because where Jack and what he's doing is like a standalone thing, you know, like he's in, in four wheels and, and he is on that trajectory. Um, I'm sure it's a lot different to the way that you had to come up with your racing um but nevertheless i mean you know walking his own path no absolutely i think it's good as well that he's doing his own thing you know four wheels there's still a lot of pressure on him the name <clears throat> doing rightly or wrongly gives him a little bit of uh, pressure and um but you know that's what you need anyway you've got to push through and you know a lot of things is uh, different but a lot of things are the same mm. you know the work ethic the, the desire to achieve and and the non-stop persistence at, at aiming to, to to grab a hold of that goal so you know as you, as you mentioned he's um jack's in the early stages of a career it's sort of it's it's sort of now ramping up and it's getting towards a a pointier end where it gets harder and harder and harder so you've got to push harder and harder and harder and, and those things are the same so you know but it's it's, it's cool to sit here and, and uh, have a few interviews with jack you know together and um you know you know i feel he's got the talent of course because i'm his father but he's also got to work hard to 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 beat the other guys who have talent as well so yeah what's it what's it like to because i'm sure well, you know exactly what it takes and i'm sure that everybody has bad days i'm sure jack has days where like it just doesn't feel like putting in the effort and then there'll be other days where he's going above and beyond what's it is it hard for you to kind of like look from a, a distance in a way and not put too much of that um but you know because i guess there'd be like a balance there right <clears throat> no absolutely but i mean the balance uh, i think for me anyway it was a desire always to want to just better myself so it never felt like a hard day you yeah. know even if it was a you didn't feel right you just get on and do it you know and then like anything like coming to work some days you don't feel like yeah. coming to work once you're here it's actually not too bad yeah you know so it's just getting over that initial hump but you need to just keep pushing yourself because you don't know what the other guys are doing so if mm. you've mentally prepared yourself and physically prepared yourself and and then um you know practically prepared yourself being in a car or whatever you can do sim you know then all you can do is do the best you can and i and you know you never know what the other guys are doing so you just got to do it better <laughs> yeah that's it well it's, it's been cool like we've been we've been around jack for a while now uh just in the 
I guess, a professional and a friend sense. And it's been cool even over the last couple of years for me to see like how much that you have progressed in it. It seems like from my perspective that you're in like this place now where you're really starting to think like these are the steps that I've got to take now to be a Formula One uh, driver and doing it with Red Bull. Like you've got these really clear goals and it seems like it's kind of gone away from a, I guess it's like always a, a, a goal down the road, but it seems like we're sort of getting closer now to it. Do you feel like that, that it's starting to be like real now? Oh, like, obviously I'd really like to, um, and that is the main goal to go to Formula One, but as well, there's other, like, there's another 30 kids on the, on yeah. the Formula One grid that would be in that same sense, think, oh, I'm now on the, on the F1 paddock and on that weekend, I've now got a shot where there's a, there's 21, 20 guys on the F1 grid now, and probably in the next few years, only two, three, maybe max five spots are going to gonna come available mm. to the current f2 guys and f3 guys so it's 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 difficult to obviously you you want to kind of keep believing and you will um but yeah i'm hoping that you know having the opportunity now to be on that program and in that kind of space where if you do perform you have the right people watching you yeah hopefully yeah. i can um keep moving up and keep progressing uh, i think to follow on with that i think jack <clears throat> has put himself into a position now as over the last two years of, of car racing to be in, in FIA F3 and to be, you know, which is on the same platform as F1. Yeah. So now really the work begins. And yeah. I think, you know, as, as you just mentioned, that anything's possible from here, but you've got to work harder because yeah. every other kid on the grid in F2 and F3 feel the same that they're going in that direction towards F1 and no different than MotoGP, no different to a lot of other sports. There's only mm -hmm. there's only a few people at any given time can get get a position into the top, the, the, the pinnacle of the sport. So back to what I was saying, you need to work harder. You need to just, you know, brush off everything and just remain fo mm. focused on your goals. And, you know, hopefully Jack's um, sort of recognising that and that's why he's got him he's got himself to where he is yeah. now and you know from now it's really up to him as well because he's just got to keep pushing himself to um to enable himself to get to that top level if if he doesn't get there well he can't you know for me i always say at least and if you don't get there at least you sort of a couple of years down the track you don't reflect back and go oh, geez if i wish yeah. i would have just done it like that or done it like this and and I think having made it all the way through to the top and then also knowing other F1 guys and, mm. and people from other other disciplines, whether it be, you know, golf or whatever, who've made it at the top, the mindset's the same. Mm. And, and I think that's, you know, Jack certainly got that, but, you know, because he's only young, it's certainly, you know, he's still evolving how, how much he puts into play. Yeah. Do you remember the, do you remember like what it, the experience was like for you at Jack's age? Well, at Jack's age, I, was, I wasn't even racing. I was in between dirt bike racing and, and road racing, you know. Yeah. It was a whole different era back then, you know. Yeah, you know, nowadays, um, nowadays, everyone's into this. You, you need to be in a car at 15. You need to be on a bike at 15, you know, like, I mean, in racing at a high level. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I think I was the youngest in MotoGP, what, 500, it was called then, and I was 22, you know going on 23 so yeah you right know, that's so, so different now yeah <laughs> now you're a you're veteran 20, if you're 22 that's right so you know so equally you know there's still guys you know hamilton's no uh, no spring chicken any longer but you know so and but <clears throat> but those guys were young when they were coming in and they were about 20 years old i think what mm. reikonen was maybe 19 something like that so you know they've moved the goalposts a little bit for these guys trying to get to f1 at 18 now but but still, it's a it's a young man's sport as mm. far as you've got to be in it straight away. So, but to answer your question, I guess in a in a different fashion, not being seventeen, but at a different age group, I should say. Yeah. But you know, once once I could see that there's a potential to 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 realise a dream, then I just never stopped working towards it. You know, mm. so no matter what it took, I was just. Uh, I was just onto it, you know, rightly or wrongly. I probably brushed a few things and people aside, but I mean, kind of takes that though, right? It's got to. You've got to. You got to put everything in. 
it's a funny thing when you look at like the ego that it takes to be the best in the world at something it's like there's seven <clears> billion <throat> people on the planet and you're like nah i'm gonna be the best like there's a bit of ego well, that i think has there's to go a, into i that, think right? there's a different ego i think you know if you think you're good you're generally not i think believing you're good something different you yeah know? So, there's like you know, a balance there though there, right? because, there is you yeah know, like there's a lot of people who, who think they're good and you know they've done nothing you know there's um whereas everybody you know 99 percent of the people i've met in, in all walks of life whether it be business yeah you know sport uh, music or whatever the good guys really are just down to earth people yeah. but they believe in what they do yeah you know whereas the other guys you know they they you know they've had a little bit of success and that's where they sit because you know mm. then you know how good i am and there's a difference between believing and wanting people to know how good you are you know is there do you see the way that your dad does stuff in like so now obviously <laughs> retired from the moto gp stuff but still charging pretty hard on the the business front do you kind of look at his mindset even because i guess you would have been pretty young when he was in that racing mode so is like that the example now like you see the way that he charges hard with the business stuff and you kind of look to that work ethic yeah um unfortunately like i wasn't alive when dad was still racing um i i would have loved to been but yeah in everyday life and the business side of things um yeah the worth ethic as you can see like from when he wakes up to when he goes to sleep is yeah. um insane really um so i could only imagine what it would have been like when on the bike so yeah be able to reflect to that um and to know what to put into to how much he got out of it so that's i think what has got to be done and to be able to go like above and beyond yeah because it's a similar mentality right like even a mentality that you've got in business is it the same as that when you were racing well it's the same thing you know you've you've got the goals you want to want to achieve and the only way you achieve them is by working hard towards them and uh, and you know trying to put the right team in place as well but also researching as much as you can and that's the same with with cars bikes or whatever mm. you know the all the research how can i do this better you know the the practice more you do the same thing you learn by your mistakes so everything the the platform's the same essentially mm. but um but equally when you when you're uh, when you enjoy something it doesn't feel like work you know mm. so you know jack says i'm up I mean, it doesn't matter what time of the day or night or whether it's monday or sunday it doesn't really yeah. it's just you know you just get on with it and i actually enjoy it if i'm doing nothing you know right at the moment we're talking about this COVID 19 you know, I've never had such long weeks. I can't remember how long. It's just because, you know, I'm not on the move and yeah. and things are, you know, everything is a bit slow and it's a different mindset. So, you know, the weeks has felt like a month, you know, and uh, it was only a weekend before last, wasn't it, that we're in Melbourne. So, yeah. you know, normally we'd be on the road and then I'd be working on the road and uh, and so on and so forth. So it's... Uh, it's uh, just something I enjoy, and I think that was the same with with when I was competing. It was just it never felt like work, you know. Mm. I always looked at it the other side that if I did have to work and not do what I'm in, what I what I'm capable of doing and what I enjoy doing, then that might be a different story. So you know, and, yeah. and as I've always said, and I said back then, you know, that the little bit extra. There's so many people with different with a with a x amount of talent you know and you know the guys who get to that top level have all got similar amounts of talents the guys who put in that little bit extra effort yeah are the guys who make it to the top and you know for me putting in that little bit of extra effort you know was easier than finishing second yeah <laughs> you right. know? so you know to sit back and go okay i'll finish second or third well that's uh, you know a lot of people that's a good result for me well you've lost you know so there's yeah. only there's only winning really that's the only thing that really makes you feel good unless you've had a terrible result somewhere and you fought your way through back through and that's as all you could get to yeah. a second third or fourth or whatever then you feel good but for a lot of people are sort of happy with with just doing enough you know but the mm. guys whether it be a lewis hamilton or you know in any discipline the guys who make the difference are the guys who do that little bit extra and the little bit extra is always a little bit more difficult to do but the rewards are so much larger yeah because it's like when you get to such a high level it's like i guess in like life becomes like chasing a tenth on a track because a tenth is really hard to get at the elite level but it's like the, the guy that can find that tenth that's the difference between being 
fifth and then winning a world championship but it's like to find that one percent it takes so much more work than maybe the the whole 99 percent before it that's right you know so you know it's easy to get to a certain level and, and a little you know a little bit harder to get to the next level but as i say then it point you know becomes the point of the spear essentially or the or the pyramid <clears throat> excuse me and then um you know, as you get as you get higher, people just fall off. They just feel the workload's too hard, mm. or they're content with where they're sitting. You know, but then to make that little bit extra, and you know, how many world championships have we had, and how many world champions have we had? Yeah. You know, and how many drivers have we had? So, and you know, from what I can see from the likes of the Lewises and <clears throat> and knowing, you know, we're quite close with Michael Schumacher in the past, and. And other F1 guys and, and other drivers around the place and, and, and riders as well. You know, they've all got that same mentality. The guys to make the top, mm. you know, there's not much different than the guys who are, who are, you know, had the odd second and the odd third and, and so on and so forth. It's just a mindset to keep pushing. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you feel a lot happier going home winning. Yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of people also have that mindset you know, win, win on, uh, you, you won on Sunday and let's party for a week, Yeah. you know, whereas the good guys go, okay, okay, that's great. And you feel, and you get, um, you know, you got, uh, you're happy for everyone and including yourself, but now the work begins on the next race, you know, so it just never stops, but you know, that, that's what keeps pushing you as well. And, and, you know, at the end of the year, you can sort of sit back and go, well, that was worth it, you know, it's, but it's hard, it's hard and you, you've got to dig deep every year yeah. to try and find that within yourself to keep pushing yourself. I think it, I don't know how many people, I don't know like how public knowledge it is, like how hard you work to this day in business, but it's like, it's obviously just like a life ethos that you've just, it's just something that's stuck with you forever. And it's like, whether it was to win a 500 MotoGP world title or to achieve the things you have, like there's just something that Dewan's <laughs> obviously <laughs> have that's just like, you just can't know. really I think stop. Jack thinks I'm mad sometimes and, you know, and I, <laughs> and I push him as much as I can, you know, he's my son as well, my son as well. So I've got to be careful, you know, and he just yeah. thinks I'm an old bastard that, you know, what would I know? But, uh, <laughs> you know, which is, which is understandable as yeah. well, you know, because, you know, he, he doesn't, well, it'd be hard to have the relationship of like, okay, dad, I get it. You're like the one of the best MotoGP dudes of all time. But it's like, because you would, there's like that element where it's like, yeah, you're just the dad that's Mick, but then there's also would be like that MotoGP dude. Like, was that hard for you to find that kind of balance of like respecting the champion and then like respecting the dad at the same time? From a young, like I think, when I was really young, I didn't really know too much about it. And for me, it was just, you know, <laughs> it was just dad. talking <laughs> shit at you. Like, and, like, Whatever. There was a lot of bikes around. And, um, and I think from whenever I can remember, I was really into bikes and that's all I really wanted to do. And I think it was only from really when I got into school and I started to get a little bit older that I don't think it was too late in life, but yeah. I really understood. Um, and then I really find out who, who dad is because it's not like he was really trying to enforce it or, yeah. um, or push anything really upon me or, or who he was to like kind of imply any pressure or anything. Um, so yeah, it's kind of always just been my, my regular dad, obviously. Um, I've got him as a, as a huge idol and someone that I know I can always take advice and um, and learn off. <laughs> it's hard. Is he putting it on for the camera here for you or what? <laughs> no, well, I know take that I do. Take, yeah. but in, take advice. I think I think it's always tough, you know, from for any father son yeah. relationship. Yeah. You know, I think he thinks I'm criticising him if I say something to him. So you know, if I would say something to you and you tell him, he'll listen to you. Yeah. You know? And um, so that's, you know, and I understand that. So, you know, there's got to be a, a little bit, yeah. uh, you know, but I guess back. there's less of this of that now anyway. Yeah. But uh, because Jack's in a different level of, of where he's at anyway. And, um, you know, and now it's just refining, really refining. And, mm. you know, the metal space, I think, is a thing that he can now he, he can now develop. Yeah, well, because you, you said before, like, how important it is to have a team around you. And it's like, I'm sure if it was just you and Jack, 
working together it's like there would be those kind of like blockages because there's a the father figure thing then there's the mentor aspect of it so i mean like having that team around where it's like messages can get relayed and it doesn't have to always directly kind of so i guess there there is ways around that by having like a good circle of people right yeah absolutely and i I think you know having a good core team of people around you are all positive and all all wanting wanting the same result i think that's the main thing yeah um and uh, and I think sometimes that gets lost as well. But you know, everyone is is uh, on the same page. Everyone's wanting the same results. Yeah. And um, and I think Jack's getting better at that as well. Organising who's on side and who's not on side. Yeah. Forgetting, you know, you know, siphoning out the clay from the shit essentially. You know, yeah. and just you know, listen to it all, but just uh, yeah. <laughs> continue on and just worry about the core people that really are, are the ones wanting as a team to go forward Mm. yeah because there there is like especially when you talk formula one that's like the pinnacle of big and sexy in terms of sport it's like the you're in monaco that's billions of dollars get spent on the the teams and i mean you would have known the same thing in moto gp like i'm sure it would be very easy to have people around that are there for the big and sexy reasons not just the underlying core of like let's win as a team Look, I think that's you know inevitable with any and anything, especially at a high level. But um, um, you know, as you as you go on, I think you, you just you, get better you, at you, it. You work out, <laughs> you're getting your work it out pretty quickly. Who's there for the right reasons? Who are there for, you know, for the wrong reasons? And uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know that's that's Jack's work environment. Mm. You know, so he's there to work. It will work. You know, it's it's, a, fun, it's not a bad it's, it's not a bad yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not a bad office, but but you know he's there to do a job and he's there to, to win and you know if he's there if he's focused on other things and whatever he's not going to be doing getting the results so you know after that event then no problem so you've got to work out pretty pretty quickly where to place people and how to organise the weekends and and, yeah. the, and the week leading up to it and uh, as you say there's a lot of people trying to hang off the coattails of of a bunch of people whether it be jack or whether it be people within the team but you've mm. just got to stay remain focused and, and work on what you're trying to achieve and i think that's going back to earlier and that's how you sort of you know there's some people that you're probably you need to remain focused on what you're there to do mm. and you know it's not not so much of an ego thing but it's just this is what i do this yeah. is my office this is when i'm going to work when you know you're at work you're not entertaining a bunch of people mm-hmm. you soon won't you won't have a job you know yeah so it's it's no different in in sport you know you've got to work out what's the right path and what's the wrong path and and it's fairly clear but a lot of people sort of get a bit blurred mm. because you know is it especially it's a professional sport you know but because it's a sport it gets a bit blurred but yeah and you essentially you know. it's it's always like a weird thing right because it's like you drive for the team but then as a as a driver you're like well the team works for me like in a way you know like there's i've seen that with my involvement in professional racing it's like you get some guys where you're like well the team works for me i'm trying to win and then you get some teams where they're like well the driver works for us like we should be at it so that even in that because it's like it's an individual sport but it's a team sport there's definitely like a balance i think that you have to find right there, there is but again the good riders drivers <clears throat> i think can work with the team you know and it's managing mm. people yeah you know at, at certain levels it's a different um a, a different thing you know when you're you when you're a paid driver it's a different uh, experience than when you're a paying driver yeah true right <laughs> so you know that's very blurred lines there who's yeah who's okay. working i didn't think who, about that either you know but um but at the end of the day you come back to the rider or the driver maximizing the the the, the maximizing the team getting the best out of them yeah so becoming a leader themselves and getting them on side to get them to work for them yeah. regardless which scenario on and then i think that's where i've seen in the past also some people let Trip themselves yeah. down because they get too upset they get too bossy they get too mm. emotional you know at the end of the day sports all about emotion so it's hard to contain them but you've also got to you got to remain focused on what you're trying to achieve. So there's no yeah. point blaming somebody if something's happened. There's no point. So you want to entice and encourage, get as much information, get them working harder than they than they would normally do for, some, yeah. for another driver. And I think that's what you you know the likes of a Valentino Rossi, the likes of a uh, 
you know, a, a Hamilton or, you know, Vettel and these guys, a Schumacher, the same thing. They, yeah. They'd encourage, you know, and even to a point, David Coulthard was one of the best at it as well, mm. you know. And, um, you know, keep the good core, pop, co- solid people around you, which, you know, will get the best out of out of you as well because they'll <laughs> encourage you to do yeah. better. But, but also get the car going better, the bike going better, but work longer than they would if there's some prick you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that they don't like and you know just throws his helmet in the corner you know lets them clean it all up and whatever else yeah. so so it's a, it's it's managing everything it's it's managing people it's managing you know your so lifestyle much to it, huh? <laughs> and that's the difference what it takes to get to the top versus yeah. you know just being a just being somebody who's driving the car you know because as i say to get to a level that's that's well, wouldn't say quite easy but to get to a level is in terms is of like just driving a car <clears throat> good to, yeah. to get to be fast to take it to another level where you're going to sort of yeah. conquer the world it takes a whole different set of skills are you feeling like you're starting to think about this stuff a little bit more um over these last couple of years because like even for us hanging out like you you're i can tell you're like more focused than when you were when you were like 13 which is obvious you know <laughs> like you'd think that but it's like are you able to see those changes? Like, are you thinking about this stuff a little bit more kind of seriously than you were? I think since I, uh, since I went to Europe um, and then when in the karting and kind of in the main scene and then you, that was the first time really I was working with a team and not racing here in Australia um, out of our van with, um, you know, dad and mechanic and so on. So I think that's when dad then started doing force and and things started to come about of really trying to get the team to work or, mm. to not just work for you but you know like it's costing a hat full of money too. <laughs> <laughs> but to be able to get them around you and really you know want to win and not just be there um you know doing the job so and i think creating a good environment um as well in the pit or in the paddock um so you guys can all work towards doing the same job so yeah. And then once they want to win and you can get your engineer, your team manager and everyone on side, I think then they w- everyone wants to work harder um, towards the end goal. So I think dad um, and a, a guy that looks after me um, who's over in Scotland, I, they both really work hard on, I think, on always just reminding me and trying to, you know, get the best out of the, the team because in the end, um, obviously I hop in and I drive the car. But we need that side of the things to be on the game as well to make yeah. sure, you know, I've, I, I can do the job properly. So how does the, um, so you're in like the Red Bull junior team. So how does that whole process work? And has it been like a pretty cool experience to like be a part of that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been an athlete since I was 11. Um, and then when we were in my first year in Europe um, racing carts, I think then halfway through the season, announced into the into the Red Bull junior team and then basically that was the step um because they obviously provide the the pathway to Formula One if you can perform so then I was into Formula Four um into the British Formula Four and then we completed that season obviously I had a, had a teammate who was in the Red Bull junior team as well so it creates a, a quite good rivalry because we're all we both want the same and yeah. go on the same spot um and obviously there's more than one driver in the program but there's not, say, eight or nine Red Bull F1 seats there. Mm. So um, they kind of try and pitch you against each other to try and see, you know, who comes out how, who comes out the best. Um, obviously in the same equipment and the same team and with um, working with each other. So I, going up the ranks um, as well again this year, there is I have four, three other guys in the Red Bull Junior program. Um, now I don't have one in my team, but um, there is a two others in the in the high-tech team and one other just recently announced in the shrews so i think there's going to be quite a a, a lot of competitive yeah in in the f3 F3, um (coughs) grid this year so it's quite a lot of red bull juniors there and obviously we are going to be wanting to progress into f2 um but we've all got to you know be the best red bull junior team driver out there and that's what we all want so i think aside from all our other competitors we all want to be the best Mm. red bull driver as well um, like in any other academy, um, but I think this is the first time where there's been, you know, quite a, nu- a number, of, a numerous amount of rebel drivers on the same grid. Yeah. And what's a what's your, I guess, like your take on um, how that can help a, a kid? 
being in an environment like that in terms of like i guess there would be the exposure to uh, a program that actually has a formula one team and then forcing competition with people like it what are the kind of benefits that you saw with that program look um the junior team i think is is good it gives it gives the drivers a bunch of tools you know the simulator mm. um dealing with the media um and and again a bit of pressure you know whereas outside of the team you know jack uh, touched on it briefly but i think the pressure of actually having to perform mm. you know and and not perhaps being chosen for the following year yeah you know is always there and that's the same you know as further you go up the sport you know if you're becoming a paid driver you know a professional driver you know your seats always basically you know yeah. you're, just a, you're just a spare part you yeah. know there's another part they can replace you with and there's a lot of people sitting there behind wanting, wanting to be in jack's position or mm. the other driver's position so so for me the red bull program <clears throat> a lot of people say it's ruthless it may be but again but it so may, is formula one you in know general. and again so it, it makes you the guys you know when the going gets tough the tough get going mm. basically and, and really this just highlights that a little bit puts them under a bit of pressure makes them have to perform but equally as jack mentioned he, he wants to beat his teammate and that's mm. going to be the same if he does get to formula one he's going to want to beat his teammate and you know there is a bit of rivalry in between all the red bull guys so you know so that's a good thing so but you know the rest of it it does enable them to just also see a clearer path i guess you mm. know you know there are there's a one a red bull team and then then the, the toro rosso or whatever that's called now yeah. <laughs> Alpha Toro. Alpha Alpha Toro, Toro <laughs> yeah. you know so there are four seats in f1 essentially um to enable these guys to run through when there's different categories and and the, the 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 higher up you go within the, the the Red Bull Junior team, then the more opportunities are available. So, so again, comes back to hard work, and uh, and I think that's a good platform to to push the kids into who's going to be the better yeah the better kid, you know. And there's a few other teams of um, uh, have got the driver programs, but I, I believe Red Bull's probably probably one of the best, if not their best, uh, program. So have you had any races where you felt the pressure and then you messed up and it was because of that pressure? And then on the flip side of that, like, do you remember kind of any lessons or like growing from that pressure to where you were like, okay, I actually feel like I could handle this better now? Yeah, um, it was probably like my first year in Formula 4, um, the round three of the British, F um, British Formula 4 at this track in Thruxton. And me and my teammate qualified. We were the, the quickest there. Practice, we were first. I was first, he was second. And then qualifying, he pulled it, and I was P2. And then <laughs> off the start, we both got a good launch. Um, and literally, it's a quick first um, turn one, turn two, flat out. And it follows to right, left into a right. So then after the first right, I tried to go to the out. There was a little bit of a space on the, on the right side before going into the turn two. Um, and it was a, a very marginal space. Um, and he obviously didn't want to, you know, give it up either uh, because we, go, we were both going for the first rookie to get the first win, even though it was on lap one of a, of a 20 minute race. <laughs> so I didn't really, we were both kind of in the same boat. And um, yeah, and I went in and obviously he didn't want to give it up. I didn't want to give it up. And we made contact and I unfortunately ended up coming off second best and spun out. Um, luckily didn't go into the wall, but you know drop back to last um and then had to come back through so i think that definitely made me realize you know um that sometimes as well in motor racing i think as a as a clear thing you don't win the race on that one but as well um just to, to pick the time better and not try and you know overload the pressure as much at an early stage and um be calm overall and try not to you know try and picture obviously as a red bull car and my red bull junior team teammate that i want to beat but also try and mix it in just like it's another one of my normal competitors mm. and not have to i think i have to get past him straight away or something yeah, like th that those so. boys made a bit of contact together that, that year <laughs> 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 but and i think that's it you know they're both trying to beat each other and yeah and there was probably a little bit more yeah you know the, the both of them didn't have a great deal of experience so 
sometimes things didn't actually work as well as they should have. And yeah. as Jack mentioned, I think had it been just a, a, another another competitor, they perhaps would have let things slide until they're in a better position to pass, you know, but yeah. because they're Red Bull, you know, teammates, they were actually fighting harder with each other. Yeah, and you think you learned a, a bit about, like, after that, crash because like it, it obviously sucks and i'm sure there would have been a lot of like emotions in the moment but then you think that you actually carry that lesson through you know these next seasons that you've kind of been in yeah um definitely even just like on that same the same weekend um it was race three me and him were again starting first and second um and it was quite hairy for the first five laps and i just obviously listening from race one and I did cop a, a fair amount of, <laughs> a fair amount of um, smack from, from everyone really because um, I definitely had the, the speed to, to win the race and I, it wasn't necessary but it was a, a rookie mistake that I think it was you know good to make early in the season um, probably not at that point when I had that amount of pace but it had to be made and then yeah the, the third race I was able to buy my time a little bit more and wait for him to make a mistake and then we we're able to, to get past and I think just you know that learning curve and having that happen in race one then and then mm. me to be able to then you know buy my time and make it obviously in a cleaner place or wait for him to make a mistake after playing on the pressure to go on and, and win the race. So when you drove the formula your formula one car experience how how was that and like can you can you imagine being i mean obviously it's not like you have to imagine too hard what racing is like but in a car and especially like an open wheeled car where any contact is so critical to the car like does your do you think that that f1 uh, experience that you had kind of has given you some insight into that kind of racing no not really you know wasn't so enough it um you know I think I can imagine what the what the racing's like anyway. But yeah. that, you know, that was a media day, basically. You know, a few laps and then plenty of press and yeah, you know, right. myself and the um, Tommy Mackinnon, who was a world rally champion, and oh, myself, right. and uh, and then uh, Jacques Villeneuve. We all had the same sponsor essentially, and we we're all world champions at that year. So it was a it was just a um, a, a, a demo basically run you know whereas i managed to crash it and tommy managed to crash it twice in total it, you know so i don't think uh, frank williams was too happy at the end of it oh wow. but um but you know that's hectic <laughs> so yeah. all you guys just made a total yeah. mess of that day but you know mclaren offered me oh ron dennis used to offer me all the time to come and test the car you know but i was never really interested in the cars you yeah know, so right i did a few race of champions and things like that but i mean you know i i at the end of the day, I think the racing's the same. You know, you want to yeah. make clean passes. You want to, you don't want to make contact because you never know who's going to come off best <laughs> on yeah. the contact. You know, so sometimes you even think, you know, I'll do this, and he's going to be the one spinning, and and it happens the other way that somebody you you end up being the one spinning, and um, and a bit the same with bikes. You know, you can't really make contact. You know, yeah, you can, you can belt elbows a little bit and and force a, force the issue, but but it's best to be clean and i think that's that's the same in four or two wheels you know you've got to be decisive yeah. and i think jack you know reflected on that a little bit which is waiting for his teammate to make a small mistake or to see an opening and just and then just um, make the pass and you know touch wood jack's pretty good at, at making clean passes you know the one thing he does do well is is when he does pass it's, it's a it's a clear decisive pass and and whether bikes or cars, that's that's the main thing is just to yeah to to get it done quickly and 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 cleanly, and then less chance of uh, rubbing wheels. But as you say, if you uh, a full a four wheel car, an open wheel car, uh, well, I guess they're all four wheels, aren't they, cars? <laughs> <But> <laughs> I don't I mean, know. They, they do make some weird stuff <laughs> with, with three. But um, but you know, clipping wheels isn't isn't sensational, is it? You know, so no. it is for the television. That's about all. But I mean. Uh, so um, you know, I've never had that experience of doing that other than the odd go kart race. So. Do you still get into the go karts at home at all? You probably don't have that much time, I guess. <clears> a little says. bit, I do. Yeah. So no, I can still manage. Uh, Is he handy? You know, for a few laps. <laughs> <laughs> Does but, that is that competitive urge like when say you guys get out on the go kart track together? Yeah. Like how heavy is that urge? The competitive urge still? Yeah, I know. As he says, for a lap or two, and then <laughs> and then I'm not doing that much of it, so I get uh, you know. 
I'm just nowhere near conditioned enough to be able to compete with somebody like Jack or, or some of the other guys that, that are driving carts all the time. So, you know, I do a lap and it's fairly ragged. So, you know, <laughs> so then the I just end. give it up and do five <laughs> laps and pull in. You know? <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, in, in years gone by, I used to do quite a bit of karting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's something that there's something so fun about carts. Like, I feel like, I mean, I guess that's why they're just all over the world. Like, you can go and rent one at basically any city. So there's that, so definitely something super fun about that uh, experience of carting and carting with your mates as well. No, absolutely. No, they're good fun. And, uh, but, you know, the same as, as I say, if you start clipping wheels, it's uh, anything could happen and the rollovers do. So, you know, thankfully now they've got a little bit more protection around them than years ago. But, but uh, a lot of fun. And, um, you know, and then they're quite high speed, some of these ones, yeah. especially the ones that these guys are now you know driving and testing and uh testing themselves in so it's quite good what was um the transition like going from carts to formula four and then to formula three like is it is it hard to to make that jump or is it something that you can kind of do pretty quickly like it's all much of a muchness no yeah the the carts to the to the formula four was completely was different. that a big jump um from racing like in europe in the carts and there was a, a lot of grip and um, obviously you don't have suspension so just taking all that into factor and then going to the F4 car yeah. um, you're, you're strapped in and you can't like in the car you can't obviously change your body weight move forward move back like in wet conditions or to try and help the balance of the car you're basically there like sitting in base strapped in and you have to kind of obviously hope for the car that that it's going to work the best um, yeah right but as well adapt adapt quickly um so i think it, it did take a while probably it was six days six to six to eight days before i really thought like felt that i like that i was driving the car that actually that, is quite a long time really it's like six to eight days of like solid testing you'd think that that would be enough time like i know from my experience like if i get a new motorcycle like a new dirt bike i'm pretty much good on that thing in like a day or two like that that seems like it's a pretty heavy transition it's a different different uh, discipline though too mm. the go-kart to a car you know where you've got weight transfer you know i'd and, never considered that <clears throat> you know different braking application as well you know the, the rear and front bias and yeah you know so you know if you're going from a motocross bike to a different motocross bike well it's Similar, still it's yeah. the same thing you yeah. know the um whereas a dirt bike if you were to go you know um even from a street bike to a moto gp bike mm. you know it's uh, you know or go back years ago whereas a i think a production bike 250 cc bike was heavier than the grand prix 500 i raced mm. two years later but you know you've got four times the amount of horsepower and less feel you know <laughs> that so, sounds terrible so uh, so it, yeah it takes you a bit of time <laughs> to get rid of it and, and i'd imagine that's something similar to what jack's saying you've got a go-kart which you know pretty much you know you're just driving it from the seat of your pants now you've got some mm. you know, the thing's moving it's got suspension it's got weight transfer it's got yeah so to really get an understanding rather than just go out and spin every every second every yeah. second lap you know is a is a different thing but I think, uh, and that's the same transition that I think most kids have, is that, um, and, and that's and that's why a lot of them seem to do the odd car day here and car day there to feel that weight yeah. the weight uh, transfer and and just a bit of an understanding what the cars are doing. So you can you can tell a guy who's gone straight from cars carts into a an F four and the guys who have done a little bit of yeah. car driving, especially also the way they use a the clutch because they've never used a clutch before. You know. Yeah. Yeah things like that but but i mean once they get the hang of it <clears throat> it's um the the karting has been a great platform for them to learn all the race craft mm. you know because essentially that's the same it's just the feel is completely different and yeah. that's why i was going back to what i was saying with the bikes yeah completely different feel completely even though they're two wheels you know but the, everything else is completely different yeah one of the <clears> things <throat> like when jack was with us at um supercross at marvel stadium we were talking with jack miller on the podcast mm. and I didn't even really understand like how uh, in depth Jack thought about even like being a spectator at a supercross track. Like he, we were talking about different lines and different rhythm sections yeah. and the way that certain guys are going in the turns. And I was like, damn, that's really cool that like he's got that analytical mind because I think to be a Formula One uh, 
race car driver the same way to be uh, good in MotoGP like you really do have to put an energy into understanding like the engineering side of of what you're there for as well as be that raw speed kind of rider or driver right yeah well if you can make life easier for yourself you know yeah then why wouldn't you and i think that's you know i think the good guys you can see it even if you just go to your local you're talking about your local go-kart track you know or where the indoor one you know you see guys and what are they doing you know yeah <laughs> whereas you so i think that's exactly what you're saying so you 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 know, you want you can't understand why a guy's doing uh, that line versus that line, but yeah. when you're out there, it's just you know you'll try a few different things, but you just uh, you come up with the best uh, the best and easiest what path forward for you and the car and yeah. and uh, to to enable you to do it time and time again. But but you got to have that other <clears throat> otherwise you'd still be at that rental uh, yeah. <laughs> car yeah, yeah car you'd track. still be at the one down the road <laughs> Are you are you like into that process of learning about about the cars and more like the engineering side of things? Um, yeah, I think it's definitely good to to look into to what is you're it fun driving. for you though. Yeah, uh, I try to you know go out with, up with my mechanic and obviously like you try you want to try and get involved, but they're obviously there to to do a job as well. And if you get too involved and then something goes wrong, yeah, true. You know, there's always that side of things. Um, but yeah, I always, always like getting into depth with my engineer and really looking over the data and the, the video on board, just trying to find the, those little bit extras, you know, looking over everything. Um, as well, my teammates data, my teammates on board, um, you know, trying to, to take bits that even, obviously when you're the quickest in the team, comparing, you see, all right, he's doing that corner, maybe that's where he's, that tenth is in sector two or sector three. Yeah. And then if you can put that into play from your three tenth gain in sector one overall, you know, you've got another half a second um, going up the road. So piecing it all together and, and taking um, taking every advantage you can from different parts, um, even using your teammates. You know, I think for me this year, I've got two really good and really quick teammates. So being able to take and use them as an advantage for myself um, to go quicker. And obviously they're going to be doing the same thing. Um, but I think if ever we all think we're, we're, the, quicker, we're the quicker driver, but when it all comes down, we're all in the same car, and if we can um, use each other the best, then hopefully, you know, come out as a as a quicker thing. So when with uh, obviously this season's kind of bit, got a bit of weirdness surrounding it with everything that's going on. But what's your like ideal vision for like going forward in terms of like changing to an F two car and then the potential of an F one? Like, how does it sort of play out? from here in terms of like a best case scenario or is there a best case scenario or so how does it work um, is it hard to even think about because you just want well, to do think, the one I, thing I, I think the transition from f3 to f2 to f1 is probably is is you know it seems to drive the car to get the maximum out of it, it's different to drive the car is not not a big step i don't think you know mm. they're quicker but i think um to get the best out of it, and as is, as Jack just touched on, you know, working with the engineers and working with the the, the, the data engineers, and yeah. to try and maximise those last few, you know, in an F1 car, I'm sure you know he could drive it within a you know, two or three seconds straight away. It's getting those you yeah. know extra seconds that'll be the the tough part, but um, you know, but. I think from here to there is just about being a dominant player. Yeah. And I think uh, and that's that's where it comes back down to work ethic and hard work and to be better than the other guys and not just be better but to yeah. to dominate. And I think if you dominate, then the, it's going to be fast-tracked even, even, yeah. uh, even to a, to a higher, de- higher degree than it is um, going now. But, you know, because it's, if you look, if you just become one of the drivers sitting there getting, you know, in your mid packs and the it's you not, know the, you're not the very podium, visible. yeah, you know. Whereas if you're winning, or you know, on the podium every weekend and, and getting good results, and then you know it's hard for people not to notice you, and mm. and and that's what that's what all the teams are after is somebody who can consistently be up the front or thereabouts, or and especially if you're dominating, then away you go and. And I think you know, with uh, with Max Verstappen, that was from an early age. That's why he mm. went straight from F three straight to F one. Yeah, he didn't do any F two. Uh, um, Bottas didn't do F two. He went F three to an F one test driver straight to F one. So, uh, so the, the the path is there. 
you know, as Jack said, there's not many uh, there's not many seats available. But again, if 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 Jack or another driver is dominating, I think the the, the doors open fairly quickly mm. because they you know most teams want to yeah. grab that <laughs> they want that, that good golden, talent golden you know? goose. And uh, there's only one way that the guy's got that good is because he's uh, he's driven. Number one, he's got the talent, but driven to want to be better than everybody else. So it's a, it's all pretty serious when it comes to like in terms of making it a career. But how much fun has it been to be in that F3 car? You got the Red Bull helmet on, you're getting on the podium, you're getting wins. Like, it, is it fun to like be in that moment as well and like to be doing it all around the world? Like what what is some of the most fun times that you've had so far? Yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of fun. Obviously, when you're performing and doing well, um, then you've obviously got your bad weekends um, where it all goes wrong. Um, but the good thing is, you know, hopefully those things happen at the start of a championship, and you got a back-to-back weekend, and you're able to redeem yourself. But I think, you know, when you're at the front and you're, you're constantly there, and you get yourself into a good rhythm, um, and you go to the you go to the track, and you know you have like the belief in yourself that you're going to go out, and you're going to be quick, and you don't have that doubt that maybe this isn't going to be right. You you know you just have the faith in the team, and the car that um, so you have the confidence to push the car um, to the lengths you can. I think that's when it, that's when it, it's most enjoyable when you know you can just go out there and you have the belief. But are you that having you can, fun? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I think that's the main thing. Yeah, I get like I could imagine when you've got a car that's like so set up and you can just hook in. Like that's like on a for us on a motocross bike, mm-hmm. I'm like perfect dirt. I feel good. I'm not tired. And then yeah, you can just like go yeah. super fast because like essentially that's what we all got drawn to, right? Yeah, um, I think like when obviously in the FIA F3 now, um, compared to like a qualifying run to a race run, there's like five six seconds different. So you do a qualifying run and you slightly mess it up or something and all you want to do is like get straight back. I just want to put new tires back on and go straight back out there because you want to have the chance to, you know, you know what you've done wrong. Now you're just really hyped up basically to go out there and, you know, set a quick lap time without, you know, going out there and thinking, crap, I need a break 10 meters later. You carry, you know, 10 kbh more minimum speed because then it basically goes even worse. But you just really want to the enjoyment of, of having it on rails and, yeah. and feeling it and you know driving it to its complete capability, and it's yeah and you come across line you set that quick lap time and it's basically the so it, like you inside your helmet you're just going off basically. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, like, and I think that's such like a relatable feeling for. I guess anyone that like races, whether it's just like a low, like a stock bike at a track meet or a motocross bike or a go kart, I guess that's like one of the the things that we're all drawn to, right? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, I think when it all goes right, the feeling's good, isn't it? You know, you feel like you're one with the bike, your motocross bike, yeah, the road bike, you know, uh, race car or whatever. So that's what it's all all fun about and then the environment's not too bad either that uh, he's been running around in the last couple of years yeah. so um, you know i think he's been having a little bit of fun along the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> we've been having fun anytime we hang out it's fun no, yeah um i think going to some really cool places um like suzuka that's probably been my favorite um, in japan yeah so that was that was awesome got to experience like a couple of days in tokyo um and then catch the bullet train and then it's like a domestic train then into suzuka um and yeah just the whole environment everything it was a it was an awesome weekend um maddie and dave they came oh, to join that's the, right they were well. over there for that um, one eh? yeah and did you win that weekend yeah yeah um, everything right. just seemed to, to to click you know it was a really good environment um came off a, a couple of good race weekends and it was just yeah it was i was in a good headspace and I was just really enjoying it, you know. The track was awesome, and it's times like that then you can build on um, and you know keep going from strength to strength. And yeah, that was an awesome weekend. Um, Spa, Hockenheim, these great F1 circuits that um, you know I had the privilege to drive on as well last year, as well in an, an awesome car. Last year's July F3 car, just so much downforce, and on a track like that, being able to use it to its complete capability was awesome. But then obviously there's you have your really bad weekends where like on a street circuit in Po, um, <laughs> it just yeah it didn't click and <laughs> I came off a couple of times and obviously you come off in a street circuit you're in the barrier um, 
but then like it was a back-to-back weekend in Hockenheim I was able to go to Hockenheim and then quickest in practice P2 in qualifying P2 in the race and it's from a space of four days everything is basically being turned yeah. around luckily so it's it's crazy how quickly you can go from being completely you know nothing in the wall and then a good weekend and all of a sudden you know the, the tables have turned and yeah you're back on but then it's maintaining that as well because as quickly as it's been turned around it can go the, the other way in a, in a click of the fingers as well is it important for you as a dad that jack does enjoy the process and like enjoy the experience of like what he's getting to do like traveling the world at such a young age and being exposed to so much like crazy shit that (laughs) most kids don't get to exposed to but is important for you like was there maybe times in your career where you didn't enjoy it as much as you should have or i guess what's your thoughts around that whole sentiment i think you know uh, firstly i think um you know there's in, in life in general, you don't enjoy everything all the time anyway, no matter mm. what you're doing. So, you know, so there's always going to be those ebbs and flows of, of whichever way it's going to be. Some days are good, some days are bad. So they're no different in motorsport. But but also with Jack travelling the world for the past three years, you know, that's, you know, he's got a lot of world experience about that, yeah. you know, so it's a big growing experience for him. So that's been good. But... But it's also important that he enjoys what he does, you know, otherwise there's no future in it, you know. Yeah. So he's got to enjoy, you know, driving, enjoy the training, enjoy the pushing himself, enjoy, you know, trying to better himself at every given point in time. But, but you know, equally take a bit of time for yourself. Mm. But, you know, I think the whole picture, you know, is, is makes him has made him grow as a, as a person. So especially the, you know, um, you know, when you're just living here on the Gold Coast, going to school you know from nine till three and you know you don't really get a lot of world ex- no. <laughs> worldly experience yeah. so jack's jack's um been exposed to a lot of that dealing with a whole bunch of different individuals trying to get his point across trying for them trying to get their point across trying to manage them trying to manipulate them or whatever yeah so i think that's been a good good thing for him but at the end of the day if he's not enjoying it then you know there's no point going ahead but but for me, like with any, if you were working, I'm sure you come in here oh, and have days. days. You don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but on the bigger picture, it's the whole thing's pretty damn good. So, yeah. And I think that's what you got to take away. There's going to be days where it's not going to be good. There's going to be other days where it's fantastic. But you know, if the if the good days outweigh the bad days, you're not in a bad space. For sure. So with uh, we'll, we'll sort of close it up with uh, maybe one of your favourite stories from the Australian GP because this was my first um, Oz GP and I was there for two days I didn't get to see a Formula 1 car hit hit the road at all uh, do you have any you weren't uh, there for the two seater running around in the morning no nah, I was there but I was working <laughs> but what do you have some like really fun memories and favourite memories because you were close with Schumacher or are close yeah, with Schumacher yeah. but I mean at, at Formula 1 events it's just you know to show up and watch or whatever so but, you know, the amount of motorsport events I've been to over True. the years, you know, from, from Indy 500s to, um, to um, I haven't been to a NASCAR, or have I? I don't, I don't know, but, you know, V8 supercars to, you know, all different formats of world motocross ch- races to supercross. To, yeah. So I've got so many different stories. So I think that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, Completely. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, generally because I enjoy motorsport, I enjoy every every facet of it, you know, whether it's hanging out in the, the pits, watching, you know, what people are doing, as you say, Jack, analysing different things, you know, at, at the circuit, the same type of thing. So, you know, and then there's some off-track activities, which is, again, probably another podcast as well. <laughs> but, I mean, <laughs> but there's so many different... Uh, there, there's so many good times I've had being involved with motorsport as long as I've been involved that... Um, you know uh, to highlight one particular story yeah. i think i need to be led down that story <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah put on the spot um jack uh i guess final final thoughts from you mate what's what's uh what's going to be going on for these next couple of years for you hopefully the situation gets better um the covid19 and we can get back racing as quick as possible and yeah hopefully the, the f3 calendar goes ahead um, and we can, if it's shortened or not, um, and we can, you know, get the season started and hopefully have a, a good year, um, be performing 
you know, up on the podium most weekends, just trying to, to get out there and be performing, if not winning. So that would be a, a definitely um, what we want to do this year. And yeah, keep progressing, um, keep going up and until really, you know, it's it's clearly not, not possible, but hopefully that is a, a last resort. Um, yeah, I'd just like to, to get the opportunity and to, obviously you need to do that, you need to be performing and hopefully to get to Formula One because um, it's it's why we're here. It's what we're it's what we're doing. You know, otherwise, you know, what's the point? If if that's not going to be the end goal, um, then I don't think you know. If you're not going to put the effort, not going to put the time in, then it's obviously a, a lot of waste of money for for dad. Um, his time in Europe, you know, traveling all over the world for me as well with mixing in work. So it's a huge family commitment. Um, and for everyone, for the team, you know, working, they all they all want to be winning as well. So. And then it, it comes down to me and just wanting to, to extract the best out, out of myself. Um, obviously, I, I think I have the speed and, and the talent to do it, but that's just one side of it. Um, you know, obviously, and then there's a whole other ball game that comes into the thing. So I think if I can connect all the dots together um, and be the best, you know, me that I can be when I'm out on track and off the track, then hopefully, yeah, we can get to that end goal, um, whether in the, in the next year or two. Well, mate, I've um, I've enjoyed uh, the small part of watching what you've done over the last few years already, and uh, yeah, I can definitely see the the work that you put in, and uh, it's been cool, been really cool to watch, and it's been really cool to have uh, two generations of Doans in the studio. Uh, so I really appreciate your time for uh, coming on to the uh, Red Bull Talking Bull podcast, and uh, maybe the next time Jack's on, it'll be uh, because he's in one of those two Red Bull seats or. Uh, uh, in the in the Formula One class, so appreciate no, the time, be, boys. That'd be nice. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, mate. Can't wait for that. Cheers, Cheers boys. Sweet, thanks, guys. <coughs>